Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. I hope you're all having an absolutely wonderful day. It is great to see you. Hello, Kimberly, Emily, Kathy, Catherine, Carol, Timeless Jewelry by Deborah. I see you all, and big welcome to Lunchtime Jewelry with Emily, who is our newest member. It is a pleasure to see you. Sunday brunch time again. What are we doing? Well, today is a jewelry journey into Victorian black materials. And we're going to be covering a couple of the hot buzzwords that you hear about, such as vulcanite, as well as gutta percha. We'll talk about bog oak and bog wood, as well as jet. And we'll talk about some other things like onyx and glass as well, or French jet. I hope you are all doing great. It is fantastic to see you. Um, I do want to start by saying hello to our newest members. So thank you. Thank you for those who have joined my Patreon community, as well as the Extra Scoop Club here on YouTube. We have Lunchtime Jewelry with Emily. We have Erica Damewood, Donna Sansbury, and Carol Herringer, who've all joined. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the support. For those of you who have not heard of this club before, what it is is kind of like an extra access club. So on a monthly basis, I do an extra scoop video where all members are invited to submit items. And then we do an antique roadshow style video and I give them an overview, go into the background and history of them. I do a bunch of research and then do some market comps as well. Um, and then I do have a Patreon club that is uh, another level where if you want to submit things for additional research throughout the month, I will give you a written report. So if you're interested, there are a couple ways to join. One for the Extra Scoop Club is right here on YouTube. And second is the patreon.com forward slash Sunday Bobbles. And if you're interested in getting some more information, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Your support is appreciated. It goes towards some of the giveaways that we do here on the channel, which includes the extra scoop um, giveaways that we do during the lives and also these mugs that we do every single week that we're live on the Sunday brunch. Hi, Sue. Hey, A2Z Jewelry and everyone else. It is lovely to see you. Hi, Mishka. So we're going to start by just getting you all to join right now into the giveaway for today. Please enter hashtag win, all caps, and I cover the cost of shipping. It is a 20 ounce mug, quite large, like the size of my head. So if you are interested in getting in on that, please do type hashtag win, all caps now, and help each other throughout the show. And we'll be doing our overview of the jewelry and our pop topic today. And then we'll do the giveaway before I move into the live shopping segment with you all. All right, I'm going to hide this banner, but please kindly help each other out and make sure that everyone is entering. Thank you, thank you. Emily, thank you so much. I just saw that sticker and your comment, the Extra Scoop Club is worth it. I really appreciate it. My goal is to give back as much as I can to the community. I love you all and I love being able to research and be here with you. So thank you, thank you. Good morning, Kathleen. Hello, Pandora, Michelle, everyone. So today, what we are talking about is black jewelry during the Victorian period. And I thought that we should start by talking about why black jewelry was so popular. Because there's a couple of things that we need to know. Black jewelry is not always associated to mourning jewelry, although it often is. And there's a specific reason, or actually quite a few specific reasons, that cause this. Um, first off, now when Queen Victoria lost her husband in 1861, she went into a period of mourning. And whatever the royal families were wearing in terms of clothing and jewelry really became the hot trends and what everyone else was trying to emulate. In Britain, it was also a time of mourning for the entire country as well. So that's part of why black really took off. And there were a lot of different etiquettes and, and sort of protocols associated with mourning that we're going to go into, um, which meant that black became quite a fashionable color. And that was in part because it was related to mourning, but also in part because the royals were wearing it and in part because it was accessible. So there was a lot of black material. 
The other piece is that the morning etiquette was something that everyone participated in. All rungs of society, it didn't matter if you were royalty or if you were a common class or working class. And because life expectations were so much lower in the Victorian era, it was common that a lot of people were mourning. So you've got women that would lose their babies, you've got women who would die in childbirth, childbirth, you would have, you know, people who lose friends and family on an ongoing basis. So there was a lot of black that was worn and a lot of mourning that was done. That said, not every piece of black jewelry that you see is actually going to be mourning jewelry. So we're going to take a look at some of the trends, but I do want to share with you some around mourning so that we can dive into that because it's fascinating. And there are different stages of mourning as well that help dictate some of the fashion trends. Great to see you, Jane. Hello, Kim and everyone. Why don't we jump right in with that and we will talk about some of the Victorian rules of mourning. Now, here are some of the different rules as they related to everyone. A woman was expected to go into two years of mourning for a deceased husband, one year of mourning for a deceased parent, a year for children, six months for grandparents, as well as friends when the mourner receives an inheritance. That is important to note. Six months for deceased siblings and three months of mourning for deceased aunts and uncles. So what this tells you is that many people were in this stage of mourning for quite some time. And there were different stages of mourning. So there was full mourning or deep mourning, which was that first most acute stage. And the protocols then were for women, especially to really isolate themselves. Even if you lost a husband or a parent or a child, you may not be able to attend the funeral. It was very common that they would be in full isolation at that point in time. And there were specific garments that you were expected to wear everything was supposed to be black. During this stage, and this is a good example from the Civil War period in the USA, it shows that a woman was expected to wear a veil. She was wearing all black with almost no embellishment. It was not a time for vanity. And even wearing something like a bonnet was seen as being vain. So really you covered your entire head and sometimes even your face when you would go out and you would rarely go out at all. This is an example of a crepe veil and crepe is not a comfortable fab fabric. It's also very, very heavy and it was often cured with toxic materials. So it also wasn't healthy for the individual that was wearing these veils, not that they knew it at the time. They were cured with arsenic. Um, they were heavy, they were hot. It was difficult to breathe in them and you couldn't see. So truly this was only worn if you were going to be seen in public or seen if someone was coming in to visit and you stayed home. So this is an interesting photo and it kind of shows you some of what is worn. Now, jewelry was forbidden during this deep phase of mourning and early stage. In terms of buttons and any details on garments, they were meant to be almost unattractive. They weren't supposed to catch your eye. They weren't meant to be fanciful. Dull jet buttons or dull glass buttons were acceptable and often they were matte and black. They would not be a shiny material. Black gloves were also very, very common for everyone to wear. You did not show your fingers. And this was for both men and women. And we are definitely going to take a look at some of the men's traditions in just a little bit. But it was all about being plain in fabrics, no patterns, modesty, and really limiting how much interaction you have with society. Handkerchiefs, often still white, were still bordered with a very, very thick black material. Sometimes it was lace. This is an example of one, but it would be a very wide border that you would see. Now, half morning or demi morning or semi morning was the period when you were coming out of that deepest morning period. And during that time, some of the fabric became a little bit lighter. You could wear things like silks. They could be slightly shinier fabrics during that deep morning initial phase. It was not meant to be shiny at all. In fact, they were treated to look creepy and almost like they were matte and, and not shiny and attractive. No bows, no embellishments. Um, so let's take a look at some of the styles that were available to women to start with during this demi-morning second phase. 
So they were able to move on from the full length veil that hit the ground into something that was a little bit less long, as well as wearing bonnets if they were to go out and they were able to go out a little bit more frequently. And as you can see in this drawing, they also had a few more embellishments, a little bit of ruching, some buttons that were a little bit more noticeable. Again, you were meant to be very modest. Um, during this phase, you know, you were showing your moral strength and your goodness, and the garments weren't meant to speak for themselves. So I have been doing a little bit of a deep dive into fashion history. I've started volunteering with a local society here in Vancouver, and I've learned a little bit about, you know, how fashion has veered from being about the garment itself and then really more to showcase the body. And in the Victorian era, it was about the garment. So the garment was meant to speak for you. It was voluminous to show how much wealth you had and that you could afford fabric and different materials. And that was also what told everyone that you were in mourning. It wasn't about the look on your face or the cut of the garment. It was about how big that garment was, how black it was, how plain, or perhaps a little bit more embellishment. Now, during this demi stage of mourning, this is when some color was permitted. Now you would never ever consider wearing a full colored gown, but some details started to be introduced like some violet or purple embroidered flowers in handkerchiefs. And you would also see little details like ribbons that were added. So let's take a look at a few more examples. But first, I do wanna share this photo of Queen Victoria. And this shows her in that demi morning stage where she's now wearing more of a bonnet rather than a full length veil. But you will note that she still has very, very, uh, sorry, a plain dress on. So it is all about mourning. It is very large to show her stature as the queen. This is an example of a bonnet. You can see all of the details in that. It was considered very appropriate because it wasn't flashy, but you do see some of that detail work. Black parasols were common if a woman was to leave. And typically these were seen more in that demi morning stage because you did not go out. You were in isolation during full morning. And you see a little bit of a bow on this one. You never would see that in something from full morning. And that cape with its lace. Lace is only introduced in the second stage. And you can see that little purple um, ribbon that is popping out of the bottom. That is something that is specific to that second stage. Little bits of introduction of color. The handkerchief itself has narrower black banding, but it still does have that black on it. And this is where you can see some of that embroidery where those floral motifs or violets start to be in introduced. So it's kind of fascinating to see how fashion has evolved. Women also started to wear ostrich feathers in their hats. Um, ostrich feathers either being black or dyed black, this was allowed. Even large fans were sometimes used so that they could have that. And we see these carried over into the Art Deco period when you think about the flappers and their large fans. But in this case, it was all about propriety and hiding the face. You can see in this garment, there is some lighter color that's been introduced. So this woman was in a much later phase of mourning where she was allowed to begin to wear dark brown, some gray, as well as some black. We've got a little bit more lace, some white lace in this case. She's beginning to introduce a little bit of lightness, but that black jewelry is still there. Now, we would be remiss not to talk about the gentlemen. The gentlemen, as the earners, were not in isolation in the same way, but there were some things that they were expected to do. Um, it was a little bit less punitive for them because really it was about wearing a simple black suit and often they already owned black suits. So here is an example of a man in a plain suit with a black cravat that was always recommended. And their morning hats, when top hats were in style towards the last quarter of the 19th century, the um, banding told you a little bit about the stature or status of the man in mourning. So a seven inch band was what was required to be on a widower's hat. And that told you that he lost his wife. The band on another mourner's hat could be smaller if it was not his wife, but seven inches told you that he was in 
mourning and potentially looking for a bride. Mourning gloves were also seen for men. They were more typically meant to be able to allow them to do work. And it was very common to give the lead pallbearer a gift of mourning gloves. Often they were made of leather. Sometimes the person who would oversee the funerary procession as well as the services were also given gloves as a token of appreciation as well. Who mourned? All classes. And what is fascinating to understand is that not everyone could afford to go and buy a full wardrobe of black clothing. Now, it became very common that people had black clothing, but it was considered bad luck and poor form and poor taste to reuse mourning garments from one mourning event into another one. So what would happen is people would end up dyeing their clothes black, wearing them for their mourning period, and then discarding them if they did not um, add a little bit of color and remake them, but it was very rare that they would be remade as long as the person had the means to get new fabric altogether. So it's, it's a very sort of classicist way of enforcing rules on people, kind of spurring on the economy a little bit. Um, it's just fascinating to know what people went through. And often these funerals were extremely lavish as well. So one can't help but wonder if this period of isolation was also perhaps related to having gone through major, major expenses to put on the funeral itself, um, and then just not having the means to do a lot of hosting of grand parties. And, and of course, one wouldn't really want to when they're in a state of mourning as well. I do want to share another photo of Queen Victoria in a later stage. Um, this is where she is beginning to introduce some white lace again, still covering her head. She really mourned for the duration of her life for her husband. And you can see here she's got a um, black ribbon on as well as a memorial locket. She loved her jewelry and had a lot of memorial jewelry made for uh, remembrance of her husband. Now we are going to jump into a variety of different materials now, but we will call out when things are meant to be worn in explicit mourning intent, or if they were just appropriate to be worn and could be worn when you were mourning as well as with any other outfit. So we will start with bog oak. And bog oak really is a form of bog wood, which is created from trunks of trees that have lain in bogs, lakes, and river bottoms, and swamps, and essentially become petrified. Because they're deprived of oxygen, the wood undergoes the process of fossilization. And that is what turns them into a very, very hard substance, which is able to be carved and later able to be molded. And so we're starting here because this is an example of a black piece of jewelry that is not mourning jewelry at all. It was very common to find bog wood and bog oak in particular in Ireland. And there were a lot of peat bogs there. And this is an example that is carved with different castles. It is a tourist or a traveler's bracelet. So this is the first one that I wanted to share with you to talk a little bit about how not everything that you see that is black is going to be mourning. Now, it doesn't mean that someone who is in mourning couldn't have worn it. Of course, they could have. But this one would have been purchased more as uh, a trinket or something to celebrate a travel trip or, you know, one of the grand tours if someone headed up towards Ireland. Now, we will look at some more examples. This is also a typically Irish piece that has some shamrocks in it. And again, these shamrocks always had a, a little bit of a religious undertone to them, um, as they would say that the three leaves were for the Father, the Holy Spirit, um, and of course, God. Here is another example, and this one, bog oak is typically very dark brown or black. This one is a little bit on the brown side. Sometimes they would even embellish them with bits of gold. So this one is 14 karat gold. It's got a fantastic fern in it, which was all of the rage. In fact, there was a point of time during the Victorian era where fern collecting became something that everyone would do. They would create little greenhouses and they would try to find as many species as possible. We'll talk about that another time when we talk about floriography, um, but it's fascinating to see what shows up in these pieces. Here is another example, and this shows you some of the carving, and that's one of the details that you can look for. 
when you are looking at bog woods. They are in later stages, so from 1853 onward, sometimes pressed. Um, they were able to do that because of the invention of steam engines, and then it became easier to press to mold them, but typically they were also carved, and you can see some of that detail. Now, next up, we're going to talk about vulcanite. Vulcanite is produced by heating sap of different trees. The euphorbia and ficus trees from Malaysia were some of the most common that were used, and they would do this with sulfur. And this vulcanization process was done to make it less brittle. Now, vulcanite rubber was invented in 1843 by Charles Goodyear. And interestingly, Nelson Goodyear patented improvements to the vulcanization process. And we've got here an example from the Dentistry Association that shows you artificial teeth that were made in part with vulcanite which is fascinating. Now, this process in 1851 became very commonplace, and it was significantly more cost-effective than having dental work done with bits of gold as well as silver. Um, we are going to talk more about dentistry when we talk about gutta percha, because gutta percha really overtook things. Vulcanite is a little bit on the brittle side, and gutta percha is a little bit more flexible. But first, let's take a look at some examples of vulcanite jewelry. Now, vulcanite, when it oxidizes, tends to take on more of a brown or olive khaki green color. So you're going to note in some pieces that they are not the black that they once would have been when they were new. Here is an, an example of a linked chain as well as a locket. Um, and this is a very sort of typical example. If you're able to find these in the markets today um, and you're a reseller, I would encourage you to look for them and look for them in good shape for a good bargain because these are listed online everywhere from $400 to $800. They sell well. They look as modern as they do antique. Now, some of these can be worn for mourning as well. But this type of material was known as being innovative and almost revolutionary. So it was something exciting for people to get their hands on. We've got two more examples here, one that is a bracelet and another that is a collar. And this collar is designed so that you can use a black ribbon to adhere to both sides and then you would tie it around the neck. And take a look at all of the detail in that. Now, these vulcanite pieces were commonly molded. The backs were sometimes kind of carved as they were sliced, but it was very standard or typical to have the flowers and other details in them be molded. And this created great uniformity. And when you are searching, whether online or in marketplaces, and you see some that are very similar in look, it is in part because of that molding process. Now, here is another example. We've got a beautiful photo borrowed from Morning Glory Antiques of a woman who is wearing a molded cameo. Um, and then we've got some examples of similar cameos. And often these were romantic figures. They were meant to look like gods and goddesses. This is leaning into that aesthetic period. And while appropriate to wear during mourning, these, again, are not necessarily mourning pieces. Here's another example. It is not a match for what the woman is wearing. She has almost amphora um, around her neck. But in the picture, we see beautiful grapes. Um, and so this is another really great example that is almost a little bit more celebratory. And here is an example of some oxidization. So this is a piece of vulcanite that has some glass that has been buffed and adhered to it. And it is more likely that this piece would have been used for mourning and would have been uh, pinned right up at the top of the collar, perhaps closing a cape. Um, and it would have been very, very black. And with the matte glass beads, this was very typical, having that matte look and sort of that no frills look to it during that first stage of mourning. Here is one more example, and this is the example I'm wearing today. It has oxidized and faded to a little bit of a brown color. It has some berries and fruits to it, as well as floor, uh, flowers. And it is worth noting that these pieces, they're molded and you can screw into them. And that is one big differentiator between vulcanite and jet. 
Now, we're going to talk about gutta percha in just a second, but I see a question. What does it feel like? It feels a little bit like plastic. And we are going to go through some um, slides that talk about how to tell the difference and identify which is which. I've got some hot tips and tricks for you. And then we are going to play a little game to identify four pieces. Um, but it feels a little bit like a plastic. It's fairly lightweight. Um, often it's a little bit on the matte side. Vulcanite can take a polish, but it will never be super, super reflective in the same way that jet can be. Great question, Emily. All right, let's move into gutta percha. So gutta percha, very similar to vulcanite, is another rubbery substance made from sap of various Southeast Asian trees. And gutta percha is very uncommon to find in jewelry because it is more on the flexible side, but something that was really expounded for dentistry. And so there's some little tests that you can do that we're gonna talk about, including a taste test, which is a bit unusual, to identify whether something is vulcanite or gutta percha. But in most jewelry journals, you'll find that it is very uncommon to actually find gutta percha jewelry. Usually it is vulcanite. Now, what is gutta percha used for? It is actually still used today for root canals. And so I wanted to share with you um, an example of this. There are gutta percha points that are used essentially to fill in where the root of your tooth would go. And it is still used because it is considered very sanitary. It is something that um, lasts for a long time. They've found ways to innovate since it was first created way, way back in the mid 19th century to ensure that it does not sort of shrink as it ages in the same way that it used to, but it is still used in dentistry today. So I thought that was kind of a, a fascinating little bit of history. We'll talk about jet next. So jet is a beautiful black material and often we hear the words jet and French jet. They should not be used interchangeably. French jet is also glass. So when you hear jet, it really should be the mineraloid that was made of wood. And so the definition is that it is a mineraloid derived from wood changed under extreme pressure. Some people compare it to coal. It is not exactly the same makeup as coal. And jet from Whitby is the most famous. And this piece here in the photo from the W. Hammond Company is the largest full piece of Whitby jet that was ever found. And it was 21 feet long, <laughs> quite a large piece. They call it a gemstone. Um, jet was actually the only gemstone that Queen Victoria allowed at court during her period of deep mourning. She's not in deep mourning in this photo, but um, she does have some jet embellishments on her clothing. Now, I will say it is very difficult for the average person, and especially for someone back in the Victorian period, to know the difference between jet and onyx that has been polished, but there is a difference. So onyx is a chalcedony, part of the quartz family. Sometimes it is dyed to give it a really uniform color to it. Um, but jet has a little bit more natural striations to it, and it is very, very brittle. So in part, all of these innovations with vulcanite and gutta percha, although less used in jewelry, were to give people a substance that was less likely to be broken if it was dropped. And you will see, you can find advertisements that expound the properties of vulcanite as being something that is very hardy and durable. And if you have a watch fob made of it, or you, you drop your locket, it's not going to crack and break. It is going to be able to withstand that kind of pressure. Here is an example of some unpolished jet. It is meant to be matte outside of the circular rings. And this is an example of something that would have been worn during that deep mourning phase. And what was common is that sometimes people would have a matte piece of jet and then they would have it polished after three months when it was considered acceptable to have polished jet during the morning stages. Here is another example of a necklace. Again, this one's not necessarily a morning piece. It is beautiful though. And this is an example that has a locket. It is a um, collar. 
And here is an example that is potentially a bit more of a mourning piece um, in that it does have the memorial of a name, Murda, that is engraved onto the back. And I really want to pause for a second and look at this because you can see how it almost has a coal like appearance. It is shiny because it can take a really good polish to it. Normally, jet is not drilled into. Um, it is something that is either wrapped, sometimes things are glued onto it, um, but it does not take drilling well because it is so brittle. And if you look at how Murda has been engraved, you can see that it's almost a little bit clumsy because it is hard to engrave, especially something that looks like cursive. Here is another example, and you can see that there's some clumsy glue, no drilling there, and it is beautifully engraved on the front, but again, not quite as pristine as one might expect to see. And we are going to jump into identification tips, but first I'm going to check in with everyone. I'm so glad that you're all here. Hello, Crystal Kelly. Hi, Donna. Hi, Possum Friend and Doug and everyone else. Ooh, I did not know that I could add that. If I'm going to add that back. If you haven't entered hashtag win all caps as our friends have done, please do so because that will get you into our draw to win a fantastic Sunday brunch exclusive mug and I will cover the shipping for the winner. All right. Now, we've talked about a variety of black materials and you're probably wondering, that's great, but how do I tell them apart? I've got some tips for you. And after we review the tips, we are going to look at some examples and put those tips to use. Let's begin. So color, feel and weight, texture, smell, and a scratch test are all going to be the tips and tricks that we use to be able to identify these materials. Let's start with color. Now I have used um, a little inset image of the examples that we've looked at so that we can get a bit of a visual, but also talk through why the color is going to be the way it is. Bog oak, again, this is wood or bog wood. It can be pine, it can be oak, um, it can be different types of wood, but generally it is oak. And it can be dark brown to black. It will be very natural looking. It doesn't usually fade, it is quite hardy, and it holds its color well. Now you may notice different color variations between the piece itself. So um, as it has been engraved or formed, it is natural, it is wood, so there can be little differences, and you may even notice a little bit of graininess to it or rings like in wood. Vulcanite would have been black or was often black to begin with, especially when we're talking about mourning jewelry or pieces that were appropriate for the Victorian era. Now, it actually was possible to create it in all colors from white to green to coral as well, but for our purposes, we are focused on that which was originally black. And when it fades, it would go brown to khaki green. We did see that example of the khaki green earlier. And this that I'm showing on screen right now is very typical of the brown that it would fade to. Gutta percha, again, would have started as black and would fade to brown. This one does not go more to green. It is really more to a brown color. Um, and again, it is very rare to find gutta percha. And then jet is black and stays black. <laughs> so if it is black, it can be matte, it can be shiny, but jet will be black. In terms of the feel and the weight, your bog oak is going to feel like fossilized wood. It is a little bit on the light side. It's not going to feel as heavy as a piece of glass by any means. In fact, none of these things, not even jet, is going to feel like glass. It is going to be a little bit more lightweight. Bog oak is on the lightest side, vulcanite and gutta percha will be in the middle, and then jet will be slightly heavier, but still lighter. All of these items will not be cold to the touch either. They're gonna be something that warms up very, very quickly to, to like whatever your body temperature is if you're holding it, and it will be room temperature if you simply pick up a piece. Vulcanite is light and brittle, rubber-like or plastic-like, Gutta percha is also light, a little bit less brittle. So if you do find gutta percha, it may have fewer nicks and sort of cracks or indentations to it. Um, we're going to look at an example in a little bit. You will recognize the bird and on the back, you will see that it's brittle and a piece is chipped off. 
that will give you a good indication of what it is. It's my little spoiler alert for you. In terms of texture, bog oak can display green and it's matte. It can be carved and pressed. You can polish it, but it will never give you that mirror-like sheen that jet can. Vulcanite can also be polished. Again, will not give you a mirror-like sheen, but it can be shiny. And it's generally quite smooth outside of where it's been engraved. Gutta percha, same thing. Both gutta percha and vulcanite are generally molded. And jet can have an oily texture. It also can kind of trap your fingerprints on it, which is a little bit interesting. And it is generally carved as well. The smell, bog oak has no smell to it. Vulcanite, if you warm it up by rubbing it uh, between your fingers so that it creates just a little bit of heat, will be sweet and mildly sulfuric. Gutta percha is acrid and sour, and jet has no smell to it. And finally, the scratch test is also very telling. Now, I don't love destructive tests. I'm going to take this down so that I can look you in the eye. I don't love destructive tests, but sometimes it is very helpful to do a scratch test when you're testing metal as well as other items. You want to know for sure what you have. There are two ways to do scratch tests with these materials. You can do them on a plain white piece of paper, or you can do it on an unglazed piece of pottery. Paper is going to obviously cause the least damage and you want to do it on the back side, um, pushing only hard enough to create a little bit of a line. Um, and with unglazed pottery, really you just have to do a quick swipe. It potentially will mark the item, not too severely. Now I do see a question from Deborah. How would uh, how often would morning jewelry be plastic? So with uh, an example of those flowers, gutta percha and vulcanite are actually considered to be early plastic. So if someone has it marked as plastic, it could very well be that it is that India rubber vulcanite as we all know and love. And it was common to find those pieces, more common so than jet, because it became something that could be mass produced very, fairly easily. Now they didn't all um, last very well because if they were oxidized to the air, sometimes they would turn brown or they would be discarded. And so you don't always find them complete either with their pins. So when you are looking for a piece, you want to find one that is in good a shape as possible um, hopefully one that hasn't been exposed to too much air, so it's still got a dark hue to it. And ideally, in the case of a morning hand that was, or a hand that was holding flowers, which could be more of an amatory hand, but could be also used for morning pieces, um, should have all of its digits, all of its flowers, and be in good shape. I also prefer the, the paper test too, Crystal Kelly. And yes, the paper tests can be as accurate. Um, with some pieces I find, I've had some jet in my collection that was so oily that sometimes it would be very slippery on paper if I only have like computer paper. If you're using paper for a scratch test, you want something with a little bit of grain and like a thick piece. You can't use one of those sort of shiny finished pieces of white paper because it's gonna slip off. Um, was later jewel uh, morning jewelry made in plastic. So the when plastic was invented, and that was really in the early part of the 19th century when it was popularized, it was invented in the 18th. But yes, plastics were definitely used for morning jewelry as well. And this is where like celluloid um, could come into play and it could be black, it could be other colors too. Great questions. Oh, we're going to get into the tasting of things. <laughs> okay, so the additional tests. Oh, I'm sorry, I've skipped right ahead, the scratch test. So for bog oak, you are looking for a dark brown streak. Um, for vulcanite and gutta percha, it's going to be a little bit more on the powdery side. And jet, again, you're looking for a brown streak. And I am going to show you examples of each of these shortly as we test four examples together so that you can see the examples. Deborah, if yours has no rain and it's lightweight, it could very well be vulcanite or it could be an early plastic as well. So it's, it's hard to say for sure. I would definitely try the smell test 
And you can try the taste test, which takes us into some bonus tests, which are a little bit more unusual, but can help tell you with certainty. The additional tests that work for vulcanite and gutta percha are taste tests. Um, you can do a taste test to see if it is salty, and I've actually reversed where this belongs. Vulcanite is in fact the one that is going to be salty. I don't recommend a hot pin test. <laughs> Bog oak can float and jet can be static. Okay, here are some things you do not want to do with them. You don't want to soak them, any of them, even your bog oak, which you can float because if it immerses in water for too long, it actually can become waterlogged and then sink and become destroyed. Both vulcanite and gutta percha can also show water marking. So you don't wanna be at steam cleaning, using ultrasonic cleaners, or subjecting them to a lot of light or temperature changes as well. I do have some cautionary care for them too. So avoiding exposure to moisture makes sense for all of them. Minimizing sun exposure to vulcanite and gutta percha is also important. And for jet, you want to avoid impact. So don't drop it, don't slam it. If you do happen to have a jet bracelet, maybe don't slam your wrist onto your desk. If at all, you can avoid it. All right, we are now going to take a look at the identification game. And for this, I've got four pieces that I'm going to share with you. And we are going to do a little bit of a deep dive on each one of them to determine if they are bog oak, if they are jet, or if they are vulcanite. So let's do this. I am going to first share with you a video. This is our first example. Take a look at it. It's a little bit matte. You're going to see some chipping on the back when we flip it around. And this is one that is molded. There's the chipping around the one o'clock mark or so long pin. Here is an example, dark black, very shiny. You can see just a little bit of residue from, but it's probably glue at the very top. And then we'll flip it around, take a look at the back. It's almost a little bit on the greasy side and it definitely is showing some thumbprints, <laughs> some marks there. Here we have the third piece. This is shiny, but not as shiny as the last one. Still a very dark color. And we'll flip it around and take a look at the back. It is same front and back, but it has been carved and it does have just a little bit of grain if you can get in close, which is probably not easy to see. And the last one, brown base, and then some very shiny black pieces on the top of it. Um, appears to be molded, punched out. There's the back. You can see just a little bit of cracking where it's been screwed in, um, which is not something we normally would see on jet, which should give you a little bit of a hint. And that is the four pieces. So we are now going to go through each one of them and feel free to get your guesses in. This is our first one. Do let me know if you think it is A, bog oak, B, vulcanite, or C, Jet. Hey, Christina, welcome. Please enter your guesses now. I would put one dash, whatever you think it is. We're going to go through all four of them, and then I'm going to take you on the deep dive of tests where we talk about the color, the texture, do a scratch, smell, and taste test as well. So this is our first one. And then we are going to look at our second one. So we'll get a few guesses in all at once. This second one, same question. Do you think it is bog oak, vulcanite, or jet? Number three, same question. Feel free to put all of your answers together if you like to, or just pick one if you want to. Take a guess at that. Again, bog oak, vulcanite, or jet. And number four. Here we have another brooch. They're all brooches, drilled. Got a brown color to it. Is it gonna be bog oak, vulcanite, or jet? I will give you all a moment to get those guesses in. 
and I'll slowly take you through the tests. And feel free to guess again as we go. So the first one, as we look at this one, the color is on the brown side and it definitely is showing some oxidation and it is molded. There's a tiny little bit of carving detail to it. We saw on the back that it also has a chip to it. So it's a bit on the brittle side. This is the result from the scratch test and the scratch test yields it being a little bit powdery um, it is definitely showing up as brown, and this scratch test was done on paper. I hope it's coming through okay. It's not easy to see. <laughs> so this is our number one. Does it have any smell to it? This one, when it's heated with the fingers, it does have a little bit of that sulfuric smell to it, odor. And believe it or not, I did the taste test <laughs> after cleaning them and it was a little bit on the salty side. So if we put all of that together, we've got a beautiful brooch that is a little bit on the brown side from the oxidation. Here we've got it. You can see in the video at least that it's got a little bit of chipping. What is this guy? And oh, if you are gonna do the taste test, it is recommended that you use a dry tongue. So they say, take a paper towel, dab your tongue so that you're not putting too much moisture on it and just touch it really lightly on your tongue and then clean it <laughs> right away. So your first example, this one is Vulcanite. Deborah, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate it. <laughs> we are going to go in to the second one now. Congratulations to all who guessed the first. So. Here's number two again, and this one has, it, it starts off being a little bit cooler in the hand, but warms up quickly. It's lightweight. It is very, very shiny. And as you saw in the video, it did take on thumbprints as well. This one did a scratch test. And we've got a little bit of a black mark. This is on paper. So this is where I'm gonna give it away now with some of the jet examples. If it doesn't come through very well on your paper because you don't have the right type of paper, it sometimes is worthwhile to use unglazed ceramics so that you can see the detail. Does it have a smell? No, it does not. <laughs> and does it have a taste? No, it does not. You know that song, Don't You Put It In Your Mouth? Anyways, this is indeed a jet example. So congratulations to all of you who got that correct as well. Um, these pendants you can still find on marketplaces today. Sometimes they have a little boy wearing a green outfit. He's known as the green boy. Sometimes there's angels. Sometimes there's women. We will take a look at some uh, deals that I've been able to find online, but often they were worn with a ribbon. So it would be a black ribbon that was put through and tied around the neck. Not necessarily a morning piece, but lend itself very, very well to that. All right, let's go to our third example often styled in the exact same way with a ribbon. And this one is another interesting one. Now, there's not a lot of telltale signs on this, so we really do have to do the tests. It is a dark, dark color, does not appear to be brown at all. It does have a little bit of green to it. Um, and outside of that, it is carved in the same way to front and back. This is the results of the scratch test. So very much on the black side, it's not powdery. It's a little bit hard to tell in these images, but it's more of like a yeah, sort of straightforward, like pencil mark in it. And it has no smell whatsoever and no taste <laughs> whatsoever. Um, I will say when you are smelling and tasting things, there will be times when they will smell or taste like perfume. Uh, <laughs> And so this one is actually bog oak. It is very lightweight compared to the jet, um, which I should have mentioned as well. So this piece weighs a fair bit less than this one right here, which weighs less than the last one. And we're gonna talk about why the last one weighs as much as it does as we jump into it right now. So our last one, another brooch, this one appears to have sort of shiny black faceted pieces on top of 
a brown backing that has been shaped, carved, molded, you name it. It actually appears to be molded with a little bit of carving. And that backing is very brown compared to those faceted pieces on the front, which is fascinating. And it makes you wonder, you know, could it be a combination of two materials? I will tell you that it is. And the top material or those faceted pieces are not jet. So when I did the scratch test of the brown piece, so the backing, again, we get that powdery finish, which is something that we're familiar with now, a little bit more. Um, and when it was sold to me, I was told that it was jet and vulcanite. However, these pieces remain cold. They don't warm the same way. They're actually quite heavy. So this is the heaviest of all of the ones that we've looked at. And when you do a scratch test on it, it yields nothing at all. So glass and onyx are two things that if you do a scratch test, they should yield no results. So what is very common is to have pieces of glass sometimes adhered to other pieces. When we do the smell test, what I'd like to do is um, rub just the back I to the pin, rub it on my hand or on a piece of material, give it a smell. It's a little bit sulfuric. And again, we've got that salty taste to it as well. So what does that tell us? I think some of you have got it pretty close. We have, I will reveal it, vulcanite on the backing, and then we have glass on the topping. And I wanted to show an example of a necklace here because this is a glass necklace. And if you look at it, you can see that it is faceted glass, um, but this glass, if you look down into the sides of it, would have been molded. So that's one of the things that I was able to do was turn it sideways and really look to see, is it molded and then faceted? Which yes, indeed it is. So that concludes the testing segment. Congratulations to all of you who got those correct. We are going to do a mug giveaway now, and then I'm going to share with you some deals, deals, deals <laughs> that I was able to find on some of these black pieces of Victorian jewelry. So let's start by doing the giveaway. Enter hashtag win all caps as a last chance for anybody who has not entered yet. We've got 26 entries and I am going to share my screen and we are going to do a draw. Again, the prize is a Sunday Bobbles Sunday Brunch exclusive mug shipped to you wherever you are. Compliments of me. So don't hesitate to enter thinking you're going to be dinged with a shipping bill. You will not. I am going to share my screen so that we can do the draw right now. And here it comes. All right. I'm going to count down from 10 just in case anyone has lag. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and draw. Good luck, everybody. And it's Catherine Podolis. Congratulations. <laughs> you are the winner. I'm going to remove this and get back to the comments. And Catherine, thank you so much for your super thanks as well. I did see that come through. I apologize if I've not caught them all. I really appreciate your kindness. All right. We are now going to get into the Deals, deals, deals. I'm just going to catch up on a couple of comments first. I see a lot of retirement strategists saying that they used a business card to test rough jet. It has a nice brown color. That's wonderful. Yes, it, it does look a lot like coal. <clears throat> there is a um, scientist who's been actually studying the difference between jet and coal for some time, and she's got a website, and I will add that link into the description of this video after I'm done today. Um, I think you will probably find that interesting. So the faceting is not molded. It actually was like a molded glass piece that then was faceted and then adhered. And another telltale sign is that you would not be able to kind of rivet jet 
because it doesn't work very well, whereas glass works a little bit better. All right, let's do this. Good morning, Quiver. Good morning, Polly and everyone else. Hello, Carol. We are going to go into the deals, deals, deals portion, and I use gem.app in order to save some items. If you're not familiar with gem.app, it is a fantastic website and an app you can put on your phone that aggregates information from all different marketplaces and online stores. So it looks at Ruby Lane, it looks at eBay and Etsy, as well as other smaller websites, um, and it pulls together all of the listings so that if you are searching for something, instead of you having to try in each of the marketplaces, you're able to very quickly get information. You can also set notifications. So if you want a heads up if something new is listed, then um, you can have that delivered on a daily basis. Although I will say sometimes there's a delay in when you will receive your notification, which can be disappointing. <laughs> All right. I am now going to start to share gem.app with you. Here we are. And I have saved a variety of items that we're going to look at. And I tried to find things that were under $100 as much as possible. Um, and I will share a few slightly more expensive pieces, but why don't we start with this one here, 75 Canadian dollars, an antique Victorian would be jet pinchbeck hand painted brooch. This is that green boy that I was talking about. So you've got um, that jet surround and what appears to be, um, they say it's a pinchbeck, lover's knot. This one is available at the Bead Whale on Etsy for 75 Canadian dollars. And that is actually a pretty good price as you're going to see. 78.96, sorry for the conversions and some of the changes that we're going to see, but I am going to swoosh through so that you can see some of the details. So this is nicely faceted. And here is the back, again, nice, awesome findings. This is exactly what you'd wanna see. Sorry, the sea catch and the hinge as well. And so this is our first item, the bead whale on Etsy. If there's any interest, I would suggest heading on over. I'm going to go back to my list now and take you to the second item. So the second item, we'll take a look at the front. <laughs> this one is what they're calling a Victorian would-be jet brooch, four centimeters in diameter. So I do want to say I have not been able to hold these pieces or test them, so we can only go by what they tell us. I can't say for certain if this would be jet or if it would be vulcanite or bog oak, but it is definitely a beautiful Victorian piece. Um, we do see that there's screws in it. So to me, it is unlikely that it would be would be jet, but I still think that it is a nice example of jewelry. This one is from the Eliza Vintage Shop on Etsy, based in the UK. And I'm not going to jump into that one because there's only two photos, so not a lot of detail. But if you're interested, this is not a terrible price either. We are going to now go to this pair of earrings from the Cherished Web on Etsy. And this is another seller based on the UK and one that I've actually bought glass from before. She's lovely. These are very much in the style that you would expect to find carved would be jet. And we're just going to scroll through. They have old screw backs to them and it doesn't look like they're drilled in, which is what one would expect to see with Jet. So for $50 Canadian at the Cherished Web, this is quite a good deal. Beautiful. All right, I am going to go to the next item. This is an antique Whitby Jet oval brooch, they say and we're gonna scroll through the images. It has taken quite a lot of polish to it. So this type of polish is typically what you would see either on true jet, glass, or onyx. Not so much on wood. This carving also looks quite good. That is what one would expect to see. 
Now I want to see the reverse. Here we go. So again, no drill marks. This is looking very promising. And if this is $75 at Grand Mafran Vintage on Etsy, that is quite a good price for a jet brooch. Um, there are some places that are charging three, four times that. So not bad at all. In terms of the size, we have it next to a 10 pence. You will find that a lot of these pieces are located across the pond from us in North America. So really very beautiful uh, and potentially a great opportunity. And I do love that motif. So very high Victorian in feel. Now, whoop, I'm gonna go back to my saved items. I got click happy, sorry about that. This next one is another piece that they're saying is a Victorian morning brooch, antique hand carved would be jet from Spare Oom Vintage Etsy. We can see a little bit of chipping, just wanna draw your attention to that, but it does look like some nice ivy leaves to it. Here is the back, which would make sense for a potential jet piece. This does appear to have a polish that is possible for a jet. And again, this one is 75 Canadian dollars, but do note that sort of crack and shipping that is there too. So if that bothers you, maybe take a pass. We have plenty more to look at. I'm just gonna pop back quickly to see if I have missed any comments. And I'll remove this for a second. All right. Yes, plus postage and, and tolls from Great Britain. So Lunchtime Jewelry with Emily, it is gem.app and I will point it out in the browser so that you see it. Uh, Catherine, I see a respin for the mug, absolutely. Okay, so good news everybody. Catherine has actually won the mug giveaway last week and she wants to do another re-gift and redraw for the mug. So why don't we do that right now? <laughs> if you didn't get your um, hashtag win all caps in, you still have a chance. I'm going to share my screen. Give me one second and we will add this tab instead. All right, we're going to be drawing again. Here we go. So Catherine has passed it back and it is going to Janda Panda Treasures. Congratulations. All right. We will stop sharing that tab. <laughs> there we go. Congratulations. Thank you for doing that, Catherine. You are always all welcome to do what you like with the gifts that you win on this channel. And we are going to continue doing some shopping. I did see a question from Pigeon Blood Ruby asking what glue did they use and what year was glue used in? Pigeon Blood Ruby, I'm going to do a little bit more research on that to tell you exactly what glue was used and how they created it um, because there have been tons and tons of innovation and I want to be specific. So let me take that away. I'm going to mark that down as well as Jeanette as the winner for the mug, glue. So an overview of glue innovations. And I will get a community post up on that within the next week, Pigeon Blood Ruby, because I'm actually interested in that as well. It was something I was thinking about as I was looking at the pieces. It is a really good question. All right, let's continue with the deals, deals, deals. I am going to share my screen again. Let's do this. We will reintroduce the gem.app tab, and we are going to go to this brooch. This one is available from Astral Coffee on, on Etsy. Some nice details in this. Sometimes people call this pattern the pineapple pattern because it looks like the pattern that you would see on like the skin of a pineapple, and you can find coral engraved in this way, um, and sometimes apparently other materials. This is a nice one, it fits well into the, sort of the fingers, and these were typically worn at the collar. It does have that pineapple look and feel to it. There's a little tiny bit of shipping, chipping, which is indicative of 
it being Jet, as they're saying. And now they're showing us the back and the findings, and there we have it, which is what I would expect as well. I am going to click on Astral Coffee's profile so that we're able to see where they're from. Ooh, it's even less expensive. So this one is $67.78 Canadian, which is probably around $50 or so. I should log out of Etsy, otherwise <laughs> we're going to keep seeing that. Um, they are on TikTok as Astral Coffee. And let's see if there's any other detail. Gold and silver tone metal closure, antique Victorian era carved would be jet. 4.7 centimeters by 1.9. There we go. It is a beautiful example. Let's go back to gem.app and keep going. Okay, so this example here, it is more on the expensive side, um, but I wanted to share it because it is similar to the example that I showed today, where you've got a matte piece of jet. Um, and so this is available at Atlum Watches on Etsy. Jet is usually on the expensive side, so this is where this price did not shock me, although it is definitely higher than some of the other items that we're going to look at. Um, these suspend really nicely from necklaces, um, or you could, of course, wear it on your chatelaine if you have one. You could also just add it to your brooch. And you can see how it closes with that dog clip. But again, this would have been worn during that early morning phase. It is not a polished jet. It is carved, but it is mattified. So this one's available from Atlum Watches on Etsy. Let's do this one here. Now, this is another one that I am going to question whether it is jet. It is an interesting piece. I actually think it may be upside down here because I think the bird should be in the other direction. They are saying it is an antique hallmark 19th century fine Whitby jet swallow. Um, hard to say for sure. It does look like it could be jet, but what's interesting is that it has this old kite mark, and these kite marks were used up to 1876 as a form of patent or registration, and it is available at Overvar Antiques on Etsy. We will be doing another brunch where we talk about what these kite marks mean. Um, so this is where, you know, the screws make me question, is it actually jet? Let's take a look a little closer. To me, this looks slightly more molded and it's not quite as shiny as I would expect everywhere. Like this pattern in the middle feels a little bit molded, but for $93, especially with the kite mark, I'm quite partial to them. I think that this is still a nice deal from Orvar Antiques on Etsy. All right. Another couple deals under the $100, and especially far under the $100 for those of you in the US or elsewhere. This is also available from the UK at the Gooseberry Tree on Etsy. A nice dark black brooch. Again, they're calling it Whitby Jet. It is faceted on the ends and appears to be carved. It does have a good shine to it, so that makes it plausible. And again, there's not any riveting that I see. So I think that's all a good sign. And at $59 Canadian, I think that that's probably about 42 USD or so. That is a really good price. <laughs> so I am really trying to find you some deals when we talk about um, the, the like morning jewelry or black jewelry. It is not easy to find. I'm just going to catch up on some of the comments. Hello, Mary. It seems to have paint marks like mine for the $93 one. Yeah. Yep. See, and that's where sometimes the more you hunt for things too, you'll find other examples and it'll give you some more indication and comfort on what, what you may have. So the if it's molded, that could explain why it has some sort of like almost drip marks to it because it's the formation where it's been done with like heat and pressure. And essentially it is like vulcanite is like a rubber that has been hardened. So the addition of sulfur, that's the vulcanization process, is what causes it to harden into its shape. Oh, that's right, Kathleen. Etsy is having a $5 off sale right now. So be sure to pay attention to the marketing that's on the top of the page. Um, 
I, I wonder if I can show that to you. Let me see if I can pop into Etsy. Yes, I can. Let me share my screen and bring this back. Make sure you take advantage of Etsy's $5 off sale. I think it ends today. The code is GET5, and I believe it is applicable to shops in Canada, the US, and the UK, where items over $25 are eligible for $5 off. So again, the code is GET5. Thank you so much for pointing that out for everybody, Kathleen. That is a really, really valid thing to share with us. Everybody likes to save. I know I do. Okay. Let's go to this next one at Hianor Antique on Etsy. There's a couple of pieces that I'm going to show you from the same shop. Um, and they, again, appear to have access to some great stuff over in the UK. They're saying it's Whitby Jet. It is very shiny. There's a little bit potentially of, of damage to it, but it looks quite good overall and has definitely taken the shine. I'm going to pop into their store so that we can take a look at it together. So this one is 79 Canadian dollars. That's all the details are giving us. Um, when I find a great shop, what I do like to do is take a look at more items that they have. I don't know if, well, I'm sure many of you do this. I don't know if you do it, but click on the shop name and then you're able to kind of get a quick look at everything that's available. And these prices were excellent. I do love that they have over 20,000 sales because I've not personally bought from them before. Um, and sometimes when I see a shop full of excellent deals, if they don't have a lot of sell sales, it makes me scratch my head. But this person has some great ratings, five stars, rave reviews, a history of replying very quickly and over 20,000 sales. So that's all very good signs. Now they've got a variety of brooches available. So again, I'm just gonna scroll up for a second. He and or antique. I'm sure that it's probably said he or antique or something different, but H-E-A-N-O-R antique. <laughs> Shop owner Jane has a variety of pieces. There is even a Whitby Jet necklace for 150 Canadian, which is probably about 120. USD. There is also a bracelet. These are very, very good prices. French Jet, again, remember, is glass. And I'm just going to scroll down. She's got a variety of beautiful things. There's some um, costume jewelry as well. So I thought this was a pretty cool shop to share with you because many of you are collectors like me and maybe able to find some beautiful things. Um, this is very much up my alley, something that I love. Silver with a little bit of gold detail, aesthetic style, Victorian brooch. Anyways, this is not meant to be an advertisement. Check out this shop. <laughs> There's a lot of beautiful things available there. I am going to pop back over into gem.app. We're going to continue. See, again, from the same person's shop is this beautiful brooch. I really loved how it's got that pansy detail in the center. It almost looks like a frame um, and then a little bit more like petal like details on the corners. I thought that was beautiful. And here is the back. Now this is screwed into the center. Again, I, it's hard to say without holding an item and being able to test it. They seem to know what they have. It is unusual to see screwing into jet, but there we have it. $67 if you are interested in taking a chance. We saw this one as well in her listings. It is beautiful and again, faceted as well as engraved with some star motifs. And here's the back, the old findings as one would expect. Here is something very similar to the piece that I have. And so in this case, we have a woman who is wearing a necklace that appears to be a coral necklace. Um, it looks like she has some rings on as well. We'll take a look at the details. I'm not sure what the material of this top piece is, but it looks very much like this outer surround is jet as one would expect. And this one's available on eBay. So let's go to eBay, USD 150. It is a buy it now and the seller is 
Metal Mickey TX with just over 2,000 sales and 100% positive feedback. Here's some, allow us to get in a little bit. You can see her necklace. Maybe she doesn't have rings. It looked to me like she might. There is just a little bit of wear to her face and do notice the gap on the side, which allows you to see how this porcelain panel was adhered. So this one's a little bit more on the steeper side, not the best deal that we've come across, but still a beautiful piece. So I wanted to share it with you as an option if you are on the hunt. This one comes from Etsy. And to me, it almost looks like both a leaf and also a heart. So I really liked this. This one they're calling Whitby Jet. It does appear to be carved. Again, the back findings look good. They are pointing out where there's a little bit of damage, which I appreciate from any seller. So the anti-diluvian on Etsy for this piece. Okay, these earrings appear to be a little bit of a bargain. It is unusual to find jet earrings for less than a couple hundred dollars now. And these have some carved jet as well as some coral. And these do appear to be like the carved jet that one finds. Um, there is a website, which I'll also link in today's brunch description, where they show you all sorts of examples of the carved beads that were done. So these do look correct. We've got some old ear findings and some coral roses, 120 Canadian dollars. This one is available on the Gilded Age Jewels at Etsy. This may clean up a little bit, but they look quite nice. All right, I'm gonna pop back for comments for just a second to see if I have missed anything. I see Pigeon Blood Ruby telling Delia, uh, yes, search terms would be jet, jet gemstone, jet gem. Yes, those are the common terms that are used. You got it. Pigeon Blood knows. All right. I don't think I've missed anything else. So we will go back to the deals. There's just a few more. Next up is this, okay, they've called this Whitby Jet, but I believe that this is actually bog oak and a good price, although you will want to restring it. Available on Etsy, it appears to have a variety of castles that are carved into it. There we go. And so Whitby Jet is typically polished much shinier. This does have that wood grain to it. And so I truly believe, especially you can see like the turning in here, this to be bog oak. It is available on Etsy and we are going to check out where you can use your $5 off for the next 10 hours. It is at the mid-century vintage. You'll want to restring it, but I think honestly that it's worthwhile. Um, this is likely about $130 USD or so. And you've got sort of a church and castle motif to it, which is quite beautiful. This is why I say restring it. <laughs> the stringing has definitely seen a better day and is on the dirty side for sure. Okay. Again, that one is available at, let's scroll up, the mid-century vintage. Next, we'll share this one. So this is also similar to the one that I have. It is a gypsy boy pendant, they call it, at Victorian Sentiments on Etsy. This one will be just about 90 USD, 122 Canadian, and you can use your $5 coupon. Here is an example of how it can be worn. You can have that little extra loop or bail added, or you can put it directly through on a ribbon. Um, and often these enamel porcelain panels do have a little bit of damage, but this is a praying gypsy boy. Let's take a look at the back. And again, it's been polished shiny, but you can see it has almost that greasy sheen to it that you want to see. Here 
Here is another one located in Canada for all of our Canadians, my fellow Canadians. They say this is a hand carved Whitby Jet bar pin on Etsy. The back looks good. I will share the seller with you. And the seller on this one is Buttons Tiny Treasure. 63 Canadian, get your $5 off. <laughs> Don't wait too long. These earrings are also right around the $100 mark, 116 Canadian, probably about 85 USD. Um, this one's available on eBay from the UK. And again, we've got beautiful faceted and carved. They say this is French glass and bog oak. It's hard to know what it is. I liked these because of the older findings and all of the details, but I will say that the buyer needs to feel comfortable with what they are buying. Um, the bottom drop, I do believe, is glass. So if you look really closely, it's a little bit softer than what one would expect if it was carved. Um, and so it's got like some almost molding lines to it. But it is beautiful. And they are saying bog oak for the top pieces, but it's hard to know until you see it in your hand. I'm going to share. It is from Allen's Bits and Bobs. The US price is about $85. They are accepting offers. These top pieces do appear to be carved, whereas you can see kind of that molding in the bottom. So if you want to take a chance, this could be a fun antique piece to add to your collection. And I believe I have just a couple more. Okay, we've got a couple of little lots. This one comes from Little Hampton Sales on Etsy. They're saying that they are bog oak. They are a nice black for sure. And they do appear to be riveted. This could be some carving or grain. It's hard to say. Um, but 84 Canadian dollars for two from Little Hampton Sales, not a terrible deal. Could be worth a gamble. This lot is a project lot, so important to note because there is a little bit of damage to the pieces, also from Little Hampton Sales on Etsy. Um, what's nice is we've got definitely the motif of that shamrock kind of castle look to it. Let's, not that one. Not that one. That has almost like a Greek key. Let's go through them in order. Okay, here's the round one. This one is the piece that looks more like a horseshoe. This one has sort of a Greek key and polished design to it. Okay, this is the one I'm calling the horseshoe. no pin on this longest piece, which is that Greek key one. And then a little bit of damage on that horseshoe too, potentially. This may or may not clean up. So 65 Canadian, probably about 45 USD or so. If you're looking for a little bit of a project, it could be a fun one. I do like this little Irish, I think it's a little Irish bog oak one. It's got tiny little clovers around it and appears to be a castle. Up to you if you think it's worth a gamble. And then we've got another lot and then two bar brooches. So this one is on eBay and they are calling it an antique Victorian brooch lot with vulcanite, bog oat, and uh, Japan dragon onyx gold filled. Let's go directly to the eBay listing so that we can get a look at this. Okay, so this one reminds me of that last brooch that I shared with you that we tested together as the background is kind of a like a brown color. It looks like it's been oxidized a little bit. And then there's shiny, shiny black, which is likely to be glass. I do love that black motif. It feels very Art Nouveau. With a little bit of a Greek key design and some serpents. Looks good. A circle brooch. They say some gold filled, 
a bar brooch, which could be anything from glass to onyx, but you could have some fun testing, could be jet, could be anything. And then a couple more pieces here. Let's see the backs. All nice old findings, definitely an antique lot. This one has one day and eight hours left. It has two bids on it right now at $42 from Floralage of Design on eBay. So consider taking a gamble at that if you are interested. Could be fun. And here's some bargain bar brooches. This one is back to brooches on Etsy, again from the UK. They're calling this one a bog oak bar brooch. Beautiful floral design to it with leaves as well. Nice long extended pin. 42 Canadian is about $30 US. There is another one from eBay. This one is $80, but you can see the wood grain in this one. So this is why I wanted to share this one with you all. I'm going to click on the eBay listing so that we can get the seller's information. It's VBall01. And there, as we look in carefully, you can see some of that wood grain. And I'm going to flip to the back of it too, so you can see the detail where it definitely looks like it's been carved. This one's 59 USD. Okay. And then the last couple of items that I've got, I wanted to share um, this mystery necklace. And I call it a mystery necklace because they're not sure either. They call it an antique carved bog oak graduated bead necklace. We're gonna pop over to eBay to take a look at it together. So as you can see, these balls were definitely carved. It is possible that they could have been molded and carved as well. Um, they do show different variations in color, ranging from brown. So it is possible that it could be vulcanite or another material, but it is strung on what appears to be chain and just a base metal set of findings. And right now, the price is $60 at Holidays. They don't ship to Canada. So my Canadian friends, you and I are out of luck. Although sometimes I have had success reaching out to sellers and asking them if they would consider shipping to Canada as well. I wanted to show a very typical Irish bog oat piece, which is this one here, available on Ruby Lane for $68. And this one comes from Virtue Doll. It's on sale for 48 USD. And you can make an offer as well if you want, but it's got the shamrocks in it. You can see the carvings. You can see some of that wood grain. It is a beautiful piece. Just slightly bigger than a penny, 48 USD. Okay, one more lot. Also on Ruby Lane, this one is in Canada. This one comes from Vining Hill Vintage. They call it jewelry for parts, bog oak, etc. Again, that shamrock motif. This might be one of the best bargains if you want something. You could probably turn this into a pendant, either of these uh, lovely round pieces for $12 USD, $16 Canadian Vining Hill on Ruby Lane. I'm going to pop back into gem.app. We've got a few more to look at, but before I complete that, I'm gonna pop into the comments. Hello everyone. Okay. Pigeon Blood Ruby, I see your question about restringing. Like the elastic string, do I think antique pieces should use string? If so, what type? So depending on how you like 
like a fit of your bracelet, if you're going to use the elasticized string, I would choose something that is like that has a good snapback to it. With the black pieces, I do like to find black elasticized string. And I've purchased it before for myself on Amazon. Um, I don't love the fishing wire clear look unless I want something that's invisible. But I find that with those pieces, they were usually on a black string to begin with. I can definitely add that to my list of things to link for everyone too. Hello, Judy. So string, elasticized string to match those pieces. All right, I think I am caught up. Hello, Jack. Okay, we are going to finish looking at the deals, deals, deals. Our next item is a large hand-carved piece from Etsy in Canada. They're saying it's bog oak. We're going to pop over to the actual listing itself. This one is 124 Canadian from Buttons Tiny Treasures. It's nice and dark. They say that the brooch appears to be signed by CH. And ivy leaves. 88 USD. So this one does have a, a little bit of almost like cracking to it. but it is a beautiful leaf. And this is what I mean by like the bog oak can take a polish, not quite as bright as jet can, but this is a good example. So they say $88 US, 124 Canadian right now is that conversion. And the shop is Buttons Tiny Treasures. And we will take a look at the last couple. This is a bird brooch that is available on eBay. They're calling it gutta percha. It's likely that it is probably vulcanite, but it's beautiful and it is only $69 from Ja Enterprise. A little bit hard to see the detail on that. This is way better. So you've got a mama bird feeding all of her babies. This is actually one of the motifs, molded motifs, that I've come across a few different examples online. Um, but this one appears to be in pretty good condition. We do have some riveting that screws the front design to the back. There you can see the construction pretty clearly here. And you can also see how even vulcanite can take a little bit of a shine to it. This one is $69.99 and again, Jaw Enterprise. Okay, this one we're not gonna spend too much time on. I just really liked it. <laughs> and I wanted to share a little bit of information. So they are calling this a Vulcanite with Berry Motif Locket. And they are correct in calling it Vulcanite because only Vulcanite would have this molding on the inside. So this is sort of one of those important things to note. If ever you're looking at a jet locket, because jet can't be drilled, it actually is affixed in a very different way where normally they put an insert that affixed directly to the other side, but the two sides would not be attached. Whereas in a Vulcanite locket like this, because you can rivet it or drill through it, you can put a hinge and oftentimes on the inside you will see a lot of decoration and the inside will have less oxidation than the outside which helps explain why it's so much darker and black so you can see that brown hue on this berry locket on the outside but on the inside it is a little bit more of that gray black so i wanted to share this if you like this locket it is 154 usd and it is available on eBay at Putty Face 6, and they are accepting offers. So it is, it is quite beautiful. 
But my main reason for sharing this one with you today is to be able to walk through some of the details on what to look for in construction and what the differences are for vulcanite and for jet as well. Okay. This is a grape motif similar to the one that we saw in our examples today, also available on eBay. They call it a teardrop shape drop. Beautiful shiny grapes. This one's made of vulcanite. We will take a look at the back. I personally would want to test it. There we go. But it does have a little bit of that brown hue and that molding to it as well. And the seller is half step nut chell. And next we'll go to this lover's knot. This one does have a little bit of a crack to it. So again, this is an example of what to look out for. Just make sure that you're always careful, even though they're not supposed to be um, brittle. This one has a patent on it, which was interesting. It's from Victorian Sentiments on Etsy. They say Manton's patent. I have not looked this up, but thought it could be fun. At 131, I don't know if I would take a gamble on that personally with the damage. I would be more likely to go towards these Victorian Vulcanite morning love knot earrings. Again, not so sure that I would call them mourning because they are a love knot, but they would be appropriate to wear with any black outfit or if you were in mourning for others around you. This is an example of sort of how Vulcanite can oxidize. And these are 143 Canadian dollars from the Hidden Chamber on Etsy. Again, with an old ear finding. One of our best deals that I can share with you is an auction on eBay. This one is at Artist20145. It is at $26 right now, although there is a reserve. And a buy it now for $80. It is a beautiful locket. They've called it Vulcanite Gutta Percha, so they're not sure. Um, it definitely has that brown hinge to it. And as we know, Gutta Percha was primarily used in dentistry, so it's likely to be Vulcanite. But this is an example that is beautifully molded on the inside as well as the outside. And sometimes you would see that these pieces would be engraved on the inside. So you've got that floral motif and bouquet to the outside, but there would be room to engrave something here next to the forget-me-nots. And you also have that urn motif. So this one feels more like a morning locket. And again, it's got the finding screwed in Artist 20145 could be one of the very best deals on eBay. I did want to share one of these beautiful vulcanite chains. So as mentioned, they really withstand the test of time um, in that they feel both modern and antique at the same time. This one at 176 Canadian, probably about 125 USD, comes from Victorian Sentiments. And again, you can see that it's slightly oxidized and it's got that brown look to it, but it also has a really timeless look to it as well. This slips over the head, as we saw in some of those photos, very commonly worn. And then the way they were constructed was kind of, um, when they were first put together, they were slightly more flexible. So they would be able to kind of insert these links. So it is normal to see these little splits in them. Beautiful. I'm going to click in so that we can give you all a length on it. And remember your $5 off on Etsy <laughs> for 10 more hours. So this one is 31 inches long, which means that you could definitely pull it over your head. 
and it would suit just about anybody. Okay, there we go. Next to the hand again. And last three items to share today, we do have an acorn brooch. This one made, they say, of vulcanite. It does look like it was molded. And with those findings screwed in, it is $102 Canadian, so about $75 USD at Tesoro's Trading on Etsy. Um, sometimes you do see either gold fill or brass inlaid, and this is a beautiful example. And acorns had a lot of symbolism in the Victorian times, meant to um, sort of demonstrate something that was going to grow into a big, strong oak tree. So the idea was like it was for renewal, a lot of beautiful sentiment to it. So Tesoro's trading on Etsy for this one. Now this one, we've seen better grape examples. Victorian Sentiments has this available. It is a morning pendant. It's got a little bit of damage and it's a little bit scuffed up. So it's not my favorite. It does look like it's missing a few pieces, um, but I do like that they are showing an example of how it was worn and that's how they've styled it. So essentially putting a ribbon through the center. And last but not least, we have one more of these beautiful vulcanite chains. This one from West Willow Vintage on Etsy. Canadians, this one is coming from Canada to you. It has a very square kind of mariner link look to it, which again, feels so modern and antique at the same time. Definitely has that oxidized brown hue. And we will take a look at the length on it. So again, West Willow Vintage, 19 inches in length. They've called it what they have available to them, plastic silicone with hook, etc. Let's see if they've done any tests or anything. Nope. It definitely has the right look for Vulcanite and it's beautiful. So 145 Canadian, probably about 110 USD. All right, I am going to jump back in to StreamYard. Here we are. Yes, so I pre-shopped these items, Jagar, in order to find the best items that I could. Oh, I wasn't sharing my screen. Deborah, let me know which ones was missed. Was it the eBay Vulcanite locket? Hello, Bruce. Good to see you. Jagar and Deborah, let me know which one I missed sharing. And I will pull it back up because I still have most of the tabs open and I definitely have everything bookmarked. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. The locket. Okay. I'm gonna share my screen real quick and then I'm going to check to make sure you can see it and that it's the one that I was talking about. Was it this one? Oh, there might've been a bit of lag. Was it this locket? And I will pop myself next to it like so. <laughs> was it this locket? Because if it was, this is a very interesting locket um, in that it has beautiful floral details to the front, and then it also has that embossed inner center, um, including space for engraving. And while I wait for a response on that, I will comment a little bit about cleaning. So again, Cleaning is best done with a slightly damp cloth, not a wet cloth, I wouldn't soak it, but I would just gently wipe things down. Hey, Linda. Oh, thank you so much for, for watching. I appreciate everybody being here. Um, I still like to use my paintbrush technique for anything that's 
vulcanite um, as well. And so what I do for that is I do just a bit of a mixture of like a dish soap with warm water. And then I will use a paintbrush to wet the paintbrush. For any of this jewelry, I tend to then dry off the paintbrush so it's only mildly damp in order to get into all of the crevices because there's usually some beautiful <laughs> debris that can be lightly removed. Okay. I am going to quickly just go through this locket again. Once I find the tab. My goodness, I have quite a few tabs open. There we go. Okay, so this is the one where What's interesting is that they've constructed it with a hinge and then they've also kind of like pulled it through with vulcanite because again, vulcanite was moldable. And so in that center, you've got these forget-me-nots that have been molded with room for the engraving. And then you also have almost that urn motif at the bottom. Okay, and I am also going to go back and check for the grape locket because that may be the other one that was not seen. So let's go right here. Let me know if you saw this locket, because this was the other locket that we took a look at. And so the beauty of this locket is, um, again, it is another one that is molded and we're gonna see the hinge on it. So take a look, you've got beautiful berry motif, again, a molded inside to it. And this is one where it can only have a hinge because it is indeed vulcanite. So unlike um, something that would be made of jet, and I did not show a jet locket, I only talked about one, jet would not have a hinge like this. Jet lockets would have, um, instead of having a hinge, they would basically have a component. I'm not sure if you can see where I'm pointing, but I'm gonna try. So where this sort of brass ring is, that would be directly connected into the other side with another brass ring. Um, and the two sides would essentially be completely open. And so outside of that, they would only be attached from their inner piece. And what I can do is I can also add that to my list of things to share in a community post as well. Okay, good. You did see it. Excellent. Then I think we are fully caught up now. And I am just going to quickly make sure that I have now shown you all of the treats and treasures that I've earmarked for today. I have. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is just share a few of the search terms. As Pitch and Blood Ruby said, um, yes, looking for Whitby Jet is one way to maximize the results returned to you so that it's not French Jet, which is glass. Um, and it can definitely sort of jumpstart your search so that you're looking at the right things. I would also suggest looking for Vulcanite. You can look for black plastic or Victorian plastic or celluloid and look for gutta percha or ebonite as well. All of those terms are sometimes used interchangeably. And that way, once you start to see the results come through, you can jump into each of the listings and sort of take a look for yourself and try to determine what it is that you're looking at. So hopefully that will be a little bit helpful. All right. It is, well, it has actually been almost two hours and I need to run to meet with the Costume Society and check out their antique fair today, which I do plan to take some videos and photos at, which I will share with all of you. But before I go, I do wanna check in and see if there's any last questions that I can answer for you. I do have my takeaways. 
um, and I will make sure that I get those addressed and up in a community post. And I would love to hear your questions. There are two Sunday brunch topics that are in the hopper right now. One, I've been asked to take a look at filigree jewelry and do a bit of a survey worldwide about where it was used and when and who created it. And then the other piece that I'm going to be focused on is Imperial Russian jewelry, and that will be coming out pretty soon, focusing on gold and silver and why it's so scarce as well as the history. Kathleen, I see your question. You purchased a gutta percha brooch on Ruby Lane. Haven't received it, but you're wondering if it's one of the other materials. Yes, keep us posted. Let us know how the tests go. Um, consider that the smell and taste tests are probably going to be among the most telling for it. <laughs> and I have a little typo on my slide. So remember, the vulcanite pieces are going to be a little bit more sulfuric and gutta percha a little bit on the sweeter side. So keep us posted. Thank you everyone for being here today. It has been so much fun <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Janda, if you are on today, let me know if you're still here and I will try and share your link. Quell, thank you so much. It's been a fantastic Sunday and I hope that you all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you again in about two weeks time. I will put up the listing and the topic soon. I see Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette is still here and she is on. So give me just a moment to pull up a link for her so that I can share it with all of you. Before I go. Always fun multitasking while people walk, watch. <laughs> I have great, um, admiration for people who have to perform tasks, like their work tasks while others watch them, because it is not easy. All right, here is the link for Jeanette. Make sure you pop over to her channel. She is a sweetheart and brings great value, great treasures. All right, everybody. Yes, I need to post you the links to the jet paper. I will make sure that I do that. I'm going to put it into the description of this video. So it's going to be saved and then I will make it one of the links inside. If you can't find it for any reason, email me at sundaybobbles at gmail.com and I can also send it directly to you. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you again soon. Take care. <laughs>